Up to this point in our study of derivatives, every time we have wanted to find the derivative of a function, we had to use the definition of the derivative. And while using the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of a function is super fun, there does come a point where we want to be a little more efficient in finding derivatives. And so to do that, we create a bunch of rules that help us um, find derivatives a little bit quicker. So the first rule we're going to look at and the first rule, rule we're going to de derive is the power rule. Um, and this is one of the rules that gets used most often. So let's look at this one. If f of x equals x to the n power and n is a positive integer, use the definition of the derivative to derive f prime of x. All right. So just to give it a general idea, what we're looking at is if I had f of x equals x to the tenth power, what is the derivative of that? So that's basically what this question is asking. So let's go ahead and go through this process. So we have f of x equals x to the n power. And so f prime of x is going to be the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. So this essentially ends up being the limit as delta x approaches zero of x plus delta x to the n power minus x to the n power all over delta x. Okay, so we need to evaluate this limit. Now in order to evaluate this limit, we need the binomial theorem because we have a binomial and we have to expand it. Of course, the issue here is we don't know what n is. Like here we put 10, but it could be 100, 1,000. And so we just have to create a generic case of, well, for, no matter what n is, this is kind of what it'll look like. So let's go back to the binomial theorem. Okay, the binomial theorem says if I have a plus b to the n power, we can expand that by using the sum as k equals 0 to n of n factorial all over n minus k factorial k factorial a to the n minus k b to the k. So when we start expanding this, a plus b to the n power, basically what we end up with is the following. We have a to the n power plus n a to the n minus 1 b plus n times n minus 1 all over 2 times a to the n minus 2 b squared plus and we'll put dot 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 plus n a to the b n minus one plus b to the n. So 
what the, what the binomial theorem st st states, and when we expand it out in a generic way, is that the first term is going to be a to the n, the last term is going to be b to the n, and then all the terms in between are just, you know, a series of raising a, or reducing a by one power, raising b by a power, and you keep on going. Now the dot 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 means, because we don't know what n is yet, we can't say how many terms we're going to have. We just know we have a bunch of terms. All right, so let's put this into our binomial we want to expand. Our binomial we want to expand is x plus delta x to the n power. And so this means a is x, b is delta x. And so we just follow our kind of little formula now. So we're going to have x to the n plus n x to the n minus 1 times delta x plus n times n minus 1 over 2 um, x to the n minus 2 delta x squared plus dot 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 plus <clears throat> n x times delta x to the n minus 1 plus delta x to the n power. Very nice. So let's go back to this limit we had back here. We had the limit as delta x approaches 0 of x plus delta x to the n power minus x to the n power all over delta x. So we need to take, so we figured out that x plus delta x to the n power is this using the binomial theorem. So let's put that in. We're going to have, let me see if I can write small enough, the limit as delta x approaches 0. And I'm just going to put this whole thing in there. So we're going to have x to the n plus n x to the n minus 1 times delta x plus n times n minus 1 all over 2 times x to the n minus 2 delta x squared plus dot 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 plus n x times delta x to the n minus 1 plus delta x to the n. I got it in there. So that's this whole thing right here. And then we subtract delta x, or x to the n, sorry. And this is all going to be over delta x. Okay, so now let's see if we can simplify this. Now one nice thing that happens is we have an x to the n here and a minus x to the n here. So those cancel out. And so we end up with the limit as delta x approaches 0 of n x to the n minus 1 times delta x plus n times n minus 1 all over 2 x to the n minus 2 delta x squared plus dot 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 plus n x times delta x to the n minus 1 plus delta x to the n power all over delta x. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to factor out a delta x from each term. So let's look at how this works. We're going to have the limit as delta x approaches 0 of delta x times now when we factor out a delta x from this, we just leave, are left with n times x to the n minus 1. We factor out a delta x from this term, and we take out one of them, so we'll only have one left. So we'll have n times n minus 1 all over 2, x to the n minus 2 times delta x. And dot, 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 plus, 
Okay, when we take out an X, a delta x from that, it becomes n minus 1 to n minus 2. So we have n x times delta x to the n minus 2 plus delta x to the n minus 1. And this will all be over delta x. Okay. Now something nice happens. These delta x's cancel. So now we're going to end up with the limit as delta x approaches 0 of n times x to the n minus 1 plus n times n minus 1 all over 2 x to the n minus 2 times delta x plus dot 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 plus n times x times delta x to the n minus 2 plus delta x to the n minus 1. And now that we have this, we can finally substitute in 0 for delta x. So we're going to get n x to the n minus 1 plus n times n minus 1 all over 2 x to the n minus 2 times 0 plus dot 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 plus n x times 0 to the n minus 2 plus 0 to the n minus 1. Okay, so now you can kind of see why I only did this portion of the binomial expansion because what happens is when you factor out a delta x and substitute in 0, you're left with all of these going to 0. And the one thing you're left with is n x to the n minus 1. Okay, so there is our power rule. Our power rule states, so let me write it out. Let's see here. Power rule for derivatives. And the power rule says if we have f of x equal to x to the n power, then f prime of x equals n times x to the n minus 1 power. And now that we derived it and showed that it is true for all cases, every time we have a power rule, we can just take the derivative using this formula.